Hello one and all and welcome back to the AOR Pro Mazda Championship from Barber Motorsports Park. My name is Justin and I'm joined once again by Joe. Yes, hello everyone and uh, well we're here at an unfamiliar circuit to many people probably at home. The Barber Motorsports track of course in Alabama uh, is a circuit which is actually quite a technical track. Uh, there are 16 turns officially on the track map and it's one where overtaking is going to be very difficult but I'm sure that we'll be in for a cracking race just like we were last time out. Yeah, nice mix of low speed and high speed corners, some hairpins. As you mentioned, uh, it's going to be difficult to pass for sure. It's not going to be easy. Um, but it is the second round of this second season. And the first race was a real shocker with Patrick White uh, of Carbon Racing taking the win ahead of the rookies, Jamie Fluke and Justin Brunner. After contact between season one champion Kerry Nolden and his new teammate Phil Reed relegated them to fourth and fifth. Enough about Interlagos, though. Let's find out what happened in today's qualifying session with Fizzy. Here we go for the qualifying comparison for the second round of the season in the AOR Pro Master Championship at Barber Motorsports Park on board with the debutante Mark Jarvis on the left hand side and the pole sitter from the first race at Lagos, Justin Brunner on the right. Already through the tricky first fast kink of the lap which leads into this long right hand turn too where the drivers had to be really patient before getting back on the throttle going up the hill onto the straight. Back up the gears through this flat out kink of turn 4, coming towards one of the slowest corners on the circuit and arguably the best passing location on the track, turn 5 taken tightly in second gear and as they get back onto the next straight to both drivers with a little slip tune from the car ahead, it looks like Mark Jarvis is already fractionally ahead out of the two, but there is not much between them coming into this very tricky complex of turns 7, 8 and 9 where you try to make the first two corners as straight as possible while breaking down towards the third apex and crucially getting early on the throttle onto this next straight which is the longest to full throttle part of the track as this fast chicane coming up is flat out in these cars and it looks like Brunner has gained some time back on Jarvis here as they are now pretty much equal on the track but Brunner loses his slipstream partner as that car pulled off to the side while uh, Jarvis still has that uh, slipstream effect all the way down the straight but may get distracted by it as that car now spins into the final section of the track a very tricky braking zone as well into the final couple of corners here Jarvis taking it slightly tighter than Brunner and you really can't separate them coming into the last corner taking in third gear easy to understeer on to the grass in the exit but both of them manage it nicely and it's Mark Jarvis who gets his nose ahead to take pole position representing Carbon Racing although crucially not scoring any points for that team as they already have two drivers in the championship but a very impressive debut qualifying for him with Justin Brunner only 22 thousandths of a second behind. So qualifying for season 2 of the AOR Pro Master Championship was proving to be incredibly tight at the top. Last time out the top 24 drivers were separated by just a second and this time the top 3 drivers on the grid were separated by 5 one hundredths of a second. But it was going to be Mark Jarvis who was going to be starting on pole position for this race at the Barber Circuit. He'll line up on the front row of the grid alongside pole sitter last time out at Interlagos, Justin Brunner for Vortex Sim Racing and Kerry Nolden and Phil Reed, the two at Team AOR Blue drivers, they'll be starting on the second row of the grid. Of course those two made contact last time out in Interlagos so it'll be interesting to see how they fare today. And Nut Martinson in another AOR car, this time the Team AOR Red. He'll be starting in 5th position alongside Andreas Morch for SDC. Oracle Racing locked out the 4th row of the grid, Oliver Connor and Harley Lewis starting from 7th and 8th. And the top 10 was going to be rounded out by the 5th row of the grid. And there will be sitting Patrick White for Carbon Racing alongside Michael Mitner. Daniel J. Morris will be starting from 11th position alongside Gino Vandenbroek on the 6th row of the grid. With Gregor Reinbeck Jr. in the 2nd Carbon Racing guard starting from 13th. He'll be hoping that isn't unlucky for him. And Alexander Trowbridge will be starting from 14th for Kraken GP. And Stephen Chantel for British Canadian Racing will be starting in 15th position alongside Steve Kagera in 16th. Leanne Robinson will be starting from 17th on the grid alongside Daniel Baxter in the other British Canadian racing car with Govad Keeney and Joshua Anderson on the 10th row of the grid for this race. Of course Anderson was last time a privateer but this race he will be racing for Willows GP and uh, that will be the case for the foreseeable, for, for the foreseeable future. 
rounding out the drivers for today's race was going to be Robert Plumley for Kanduki Racing in 21st, alongside Nigel Spears in 22nd. Alexander Von Rumpy will be starting his Season 2 from 23rd on the grid, alongside Vittorio Saltalamarchi in the other Kanduki car. Evan Imray will be starting from 25th on the grid, alongside Jamie Hull, who rounds out the qualifiers in 26th position. Let's see how the drivers fare now for the race. It's race time from Alabama at the Barber Motorsports Park. Mark Jarvis is on pole position, and for the first time ever in the league's history, Kerry Nolden starts below second place, way, way, way down in third. And with Justin Brunner sharing the front row with Mark Jarvis, it's going to be very interesting. Heading into turn one, it's a fairly short run, and it's a pretty high-speed corner as we see the lights starting to come on now. All the cars are on the grid. Mark Jarvis with that nice line of sight, clear line of sight down to turn one, and the lights are green, and it looks like a clean start for everyone up at the front. Looks like Carey defending from his teammate just a little bit into turn one, but no, he's got that inside line, and he is going to hang on to that third place position and we've got a number of side-by-side -side battles going on into the first couple of corners and there's a spin and there's been some contact as well one of the cars flying off into the sand into the gravel trap there and that is Gino Vandenbrock uh, currently with uh, Patrick White having a little look-see at them as they come now into the hairpin of turn five this is going to be a very popular overtaking location here at turn five in fact I expect to see the majority of the overtakes here at that turn five hairpin with that nice run through turn three and four you get that slipstream get that inside line or outside if you're brave and take that position off of the person in front of you and there's been more oh. contact and that's one of the that's phil reed in the aor blue car and it looks like he has not even made, is he going to be able to continue he's going to have some significant damage you can see the the rear wing damage on phil reed's car there uh, and it does look like it was andreas merck that made contact with him that's a very difficult corner there at turn seven and then eight uh, it's a very complex series of quarters, as Joe was saying earlier in the broadcast, is a very technical circuit, and that is among the most technical corners on the circuit, and that's uh, very, very unfortunate for Team AOR Blue here in this opening lap. Yeah, most definitely, you know, leading the Constructors' Championship, that is not what they wanted uh, on the first lap of the race as well, I mean... Uh, it's definitely uh, going to be an uphill battle now for, for Nolden to be carrying the points for the AOR team, the uh, AOR blue team. But now, as we're looking further down the field, uh, that is the number 23 car taking a look down the uh, inside. As, uh, we're now uh, on board uh, looking at Alexander Von Rumpy. But uh, there is Nolden going down the inside of Justin Brunner in the battle for second place in this race. And uh, it looks as if Nolden's made the move stick. So uh, that's, that's good for him. Um, obviously, the, the Season 1 champion will be looking to make up time on Mark Jarvis, who has had a dream start to this race, of course. Uh, he is a privateer, uh, but uh, obviously racing under the, uh, the, the carbon racing livery uh, this weekend. And yep. uh, now... As, uh, as, sorry, sorry, Justin, go on. Oh, yeah, I was just going to mention, yeah, because he's not scoring points for them, but he, yeah, he is wearing that carbon livery. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, just, just for this weekend, uh, he'll be uh, using that livery. But uh, now, uh, as we're looking further down the field, that's uh, Vittorio Saltalamarchi um, in the uh, the Conducci racing car, making a beautiful move through that uh, that complex section of corners. But uh, anyway, on board now with Gino Vandenbroek in the, uh, the ACR car. And uh, he'll be looking to maybe make up a few positions. It's just a sea of red in front of him uh, at the moment, of course, um, a lot of those liveries. Uh, but now as we're taking a replay of the start of the race, just look at that start from Jarvis. He got a dream start as uh, there's a few cars who are uh, just lagging a little bit from the start of the race. But uh, most, uh, most notably, you've got to say that Jarvis had a fantastic start and that would be uh, just what he was looking for uh, to, to start off his, uh, his season. Yeah, that was a, a fantastic start, as you mentioned. And uh, here we are on lap one. This is uh, the incident that we saw where uh, somebody was spun off into the gravel. Yeah, you can see the contact. Really, not much that could be done about that. I think that was probably a racing incident. And this is that uh, incident between Merck and Reed. Oh, you can see Merck just got 
way out of shape there. Uh, that's that turn seven and eight complex that I was telling you guys about. A uh, very complex series of corners. It's going downhill. Uh, there's lots of curving there. It's very easy to get bent out of shape, especially on lap one with these very cold tires that you can still see Phil Reed turning the wheel in the car as he's upside down. I don't think that's going to help very much, Phil, unfortunately. And uh, there he goes spinning up and over. So he, I mean, starting from fourth position right behind his teammate and looking very good for this race. And there he goes, just taken out of the race by Andreas Merck. Obviously not intentional. So we're picking back up on lap five now with Gino Vandenbroek in that number one, uh, number 51 car. And he is uh, just behind Michael Mittner. And he's got Daniel J. Morris in the Red Devolution car just behind him. The only Red Devolution car. We had four of them last time out at Interlagos. We've got one this time. So that'll make things much easier. Uh, be much easier to tell who Morris is. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, on board with Gino Vandenbroek right now. And uh, he's trying to make up a position as we as we do go on board, actually, uh, with Morris uh, just behind. And then switch back to uh, Vandenbroek. And there, there's that corner. That's the corner where Phil Reed was hit. Uh, very t difficult corner. You have this nice long run now. Uh, uh, he's going to be, uh, Gino Vanderbrock going to be getting a nice slipstream through there. And then it's a couple of very, very high speed corners there. A left and then a right through 11 and then, and then 12. And then it's a blind apex there as Harley Lewis proves just how blind that apex can be. And he is stopped in the middle of the circuit. But it does look like the racing line is on the right side of that part of the circuit. He is going to lose a number of positions, though. That is very unfortunate for Harley Lewis, uh, who who was quite a contender last season, really not having a great race now as he made that mistake through 11. So we're back on board with the battle between Mittner, Vandenbroek, and Morris, and actually Patrick White not far behind them as well. Uh, you can see he's getting into the mix there. Um, they, of course, Patrick White being uh, the winner of uh, last week's race, and uh, he is uh, just behind Morris. Um, so it does look like that three-way battle is now kind of a six-way battle, actually, with Lee Ann Robinson bringing up the tail end of that of this six-way battle. Um, and uh, they're coming in now to that hairpin. Oh, and Oliver Connor looks like maybe he got too aggressive with the downshifts. Hopefully we could get some confirmation about what exactly happened with Oliver. Uh, but uh, very, very likely that he got too aggressive on the downshifts heading into that turn five hairpin. Um, again, that's one of the highest uh, uh, braking zones of the circuit, if not the highest braking zone. I believe it is because um, you're carrying a lot of speed to, through turns three and four uh, into t that turn five hairpin there. And uh, it's uh, all, all as it was before. Gino Vandenbroek still running behind Michael Mittner and as well, Morris still running behind him. So no changes in this uh, six-way battle, at least not in the top half. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, it's a very, very tight mid-pack, as we saw last time out. And in fact, yes, we have got com uh, confirmation uh, that that was an engine breakdown for Oliver Connor. And uh, now we've got Nut Martinson for the AOR Red team, who's uh, going up into fourth position. He will be incredibly happy with that uh, after a very difficult race for him last time out. But this battle, uh, which is going on at the moment for sixth place, I believe now, uh, is a very, very tight one as uh, we come through one of the most complex parts of the circuit, as we said earlier. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a very, very difficult race, you know, following behind these cars, of course. Uh, the, the dirty air effect going through these high-speed corners is, uh, is going to be difficult on the tyre wear as well oh. as that's... Oh, I, I'm not quite sure who that is. It's a 45 car as uh, there's Patrick White and there's two carbon racing cars who have gone spinning... And uh, that's Craig Ryanbeck Jr. as well. He looks as if he's got going again. But Patrick White has lost a ha he's lost numerous positions. And he looks as if he's struggling to, in fact, get back on the circuit. As uh, one of the tortoise racing cars then goes flying past him. And eventually, Patrick White does get going. But is he pulling off to the side? I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see what happens to him later on in the race. As uh, now we're on board with Stephen Chantal. who looks as if he's got his teammate on his tail, uh, Daniel mm -hmm. Baxter as he's following uh, Alexander Trowbridge for 11th position. So this very much in the midfield of the circuit as they go through the sweeping left and right hander. They've got to be very um, well, very careful not to get on the curbs too much there as we've seen already in this race that the curbs can throw you off if you do get too, uh, too aggressive and uh, maybe a bit too... Uh, excited and uh, um, obviously trying to make up positions and uh, in fact both carbon racing cars have in fact retired wow. from the race uh, due to excessive damage so they're going to be scoring no points this afternoon and uh, also Oracle Racing who didn't score any points last time out it's going to be difficult for them to score any as uh, that's Chantal taking a look down the inside of Trowbridge going through that sweeping right uh, 180 degree corner as uh, but it still hasn't got the move done and it looks as if there is uh, 
there is another car joining the back of this battle as it is non-stop currently and uh, Chantal looking to maybe throw one up the inside but uh, Trowbridge is wise to the move and uh, there's another car just ahead there it is the 69 car of Leanne Robinson uh, in the Willows GP car as uh, Trowbridge then just doesn't seem to be able to get past and uh, well it, it looks as if he isn't going uh, to, to be passed anytime soon and uh, it's going to be a long afternoon for a lot of cars. And so picking up on lap 10, same battle actually still going on. Alexander Trowbridge still holding on to that position with the British American Racing Team. B.A.R. Oh, he's shooting up the, Chantal shooting up the inside there. But no, he couldn't quite make it. It looks like he's going to come under attack from his teammate, Daniel Baxter. He's going to have the inside line for turn one. Does he? Is he alongside? No, he, he's had to slot back behind it. That is uh, Govan Keeney. I do apologize if I'm uh, pronouncing your first name wrong. Uh, but Keeney has joined into this battle. That's uh, the car. And actually, there's a fifth car right behind him as well this is now a five-way battle that does look like one of the sdc motorsports cars i'm not i think that might be van dorn actually if i'm not mistaken uh and nope that is andreas Merck. i do apologize yeah. yeah that is andreas Merck. um and it does look like uh trowbridge ran a little bit wide there through the hairpin the turn five hairpin which as i mentioned uh very popular overtaking oh. location mark jarvis has gotten it all wrong and just barely carrie nolden misses him very, very nearly missing him. That was incredible. And once again, that was that blind hair, uh, not hairpin, that was that blind apex at turn 11. I do believe that caught him out, got, got him bent out of shape through turn 12. And that is going to put Kerry Nolden into the lead of this race. And Mark Jarvis down into second place, so he did, he nearly lost another position to, uh, to Justin Brunner there. Um, and that is the corner right there. Daniel Baxter just went through it uh, where he lost that time and the position as well. Um, very difficult corner here. This penultimate corner as Keeney just shoots up the inside on Baxter through the penultimate corner. That was actually a beautiful move. That was one of the better moves I've seen all race so far. Uh, big big props to Keeney for that move because I've really enjoyed that one. Uh, so he, he moves up a position. Trowbridge, though, still hanging on to the lead of this battle as it stands right now. This is uh, for the top 10 uh, and then spilling down into the uh, below the top 10. Uh, so this battle is uh, right on that edge between the top 10 and uh, uh, the top 20 and we're on board with Keeney right now he does look like he's lost a little bit of time but uh, they are going to be going side by side just ahead of him Chantel and Dro uh, Trowbridge slowing each other just a little bit allowing Keeney to close that gap a little bit which he's done um, but of course he's got Baxter all over the back of him still uh, we're on board with Mark Jarvis once again here on lap 11 and he's gone very wide very wide at turn 13 that's going to lose him another position he's down into third place now gets a little bit of oversteer as he's rejoining the track and that is a very very big gap now between himself and second and now second place runner Justin Brunner and it looks like Kerry Nolden is gonna run away with this if uh, if nobody can respond but it looks like all all three of these guys in the top three um, are now out of uh, slipstream range um, so it's it, it could be potentially a little bit boring for the top three now as, as they've broken apart yeah you know that top three it just uh, obviously constantly changing and Nolden will be looking to, to try and you know stay out of that slipstream we know how powerful it can be as uh, that's Keeney now taking a look uh, to tr maybe try and get another position as uh, I did particularly enjoy that move that he did make earlier on the British Canadian racing car uh, but he's going to be looking to get past Trowbridge and uh, as you said Justin you know this is just on the cusp of the top 10 so these drivers will be looking to score some significant points this afternoon uh, obviously seeing as they are so close together a lot of them a lot of them will see this as a, as a good opportunity and uh, well this part of the race is currently on lap 12 and uh, you, you guys can let us know uh, what what you think of this race obviously uh, using the hashtag in the top left corner of uh, of here uh, hashtag AOR Pro Mazda so let us know what you think of this current season and uh, oh, that's uh, is that Nolden running wide that's it is Nolden. and it uh, looks as if he was uh, with a back oh. oh my word he's just gone straight into another car and that was uh, Brunner it was it was indeed Brunner and Nolden it looks as if he's out of this race I believe he was coming up to a back marker if I'm not mistaken and uh, he just completely misjudged it and uh, Justin Brunner has uh, now come through to take the lead of this race and it is indeed a uh, broken suspension for Nolden and uh, well he's going to be out of this Grand Prix and he's going to be scoring no points this afternoon and uh, well, after making contact last race with his teammates 
more unfortunate luck for the Season 1 champion. And, well, he's going to have to get some points on the board very quickly because Justin Brunner is surely going to be gaining some more points on him this race. As uh, now we are further down the field. Is this Gino Vandenbroek, I believe? Uh, yep. Taking a look at, at a, trying to get another Mittner. position. It's Michael Mittner in the LM Rensport car. So this is currently now a battle for fourth place, I believe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, as uh, these, th these two cars, they will be relishing in uh, in Nolden's failure. And uh, Vandenbroek uh, coming through the sweeping left and right hander. Is he going to make a move? He gets a little bit up on the curb, but he is well within the slipstream of Mittner. Is he going to take a look down the inside? No, he thinks better of it because it's a very, very high speed corner. You do not want to be running side by side through there. Uh, but I can assure you that this battle will continue a long way into the race. Yeah, yeah, uh, Gino Vanderbrock pushing very, very hard for that now, as you mentioned, uh, fourth place position. Uh, it was it was for fifth place position, but of course with Kerry Nolden out of this race, that is now for fourth place. Uh, Michael Mittner, though, doing a fantastic job. Um, and as uh, just to go back to that crash with Kerry Nolden, I, I do believe you were right. The, he was coming up on some lap traffic, and he was going through the double right-hander, uh, almost triple right-hander, uh, at, at the end of the circuit, and I think he may have caught some dirty air there. Uh, um, and that sent him right off the circuit, and uh, he got some oversteer when he was rejoining, and uh, that's what sent him in. Oh no! And there's been contact between Vandenbroek and Mittner. Oh, that is that is very unfortunate for Mittner. Pretty. Oh, and look at Vandenbroek's oh, wheel. Yeah. Look at Vandenbroek's oh. wheel. That car is going nowhere fast, and it looks like he is going to have to park that thing up coming out of the turn five hairpin. That is very unfortunate. I don't. I hate to say it, but I think you may have commentator cursed him there, Joe. Uh, talking about uh, a, a long battle. To, to last the entire race and there goes Gino Vandenbroek I believe out of this race uh, I haven't seen him uh, from any of these other cars so I do believe that means he probably got a tow back to the pits uh, very very unfortunate for them uh, we're on board though once again with Keeney uh, who is a reserve driver and in a very colorful livery if I do say so myself uh, and who has made in my opinion one of the one of the best moves if not the best move of the day so far so uh, he is uh, definitely one that I'm pulling for and look at him close Closing up under Trowbridge in that high-speed S section. Here's the double right-hander, and it's very difficult, though. You have to break the car as you're turning the wheel. Uh, very difficult set of corners here. Uh, just about flat out through that final corner. You can hear a little bit of a lift from Keeney as he's running behind Trowbridge, um, but uh, that may have just been because of the dirty air. Uh, Trowbridge very likely may have been flat out through that final corner. Um, I do imagine there's a lot of downforce running on these cars because uh, there's very little in the way of straights here uh, at Barbara Motorsports Park. Of course, Ron won now. Uh, this is that run down towards the turn five. Trowbridge goes defensive, covering off the inside line at turn five. Keeney's going to shoot around the outside. As I mentioned before, this is brave stuff to try around the outside. It's a very, very Difficult. He's in the grass as well, actually, and it does look like he is going to lose out. No, he does. He's right. He cuts across almost contact between them. He thinks better of it, and he is going to have to defend from the outside, which isn't so bad wow. here, actually, if he could do it. Yeah, and he does do it. He gets a little bit of oversteer, but it looked like just enough to rotate the car, and now it is a teammate battle between Baxter and Chantal. Uh, this is fantastic stuff here. Really, really exciting, and uh, I, 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 I'm very excited for what's going to happen next. <laughs> And so here is the replay, actually, uh, or a replay between uh, Andreas Merck and Van Rompuy. And there goes Merck just right around the outside in that number 67 car at the, t at the turn five hairpin. That was a beautiful move there. Some really nice overtakes being shown off here at this really obscure circuit. As you mentioned, Joe, in the opening, uh, it's not a circuit very many people are very familiar with. I'm not even all that familiar with Barbara Motorsports Park myself. Uh, and I live in America, um, but we're, we're just about at that halfway point of this race um, we're currently on board with that battle for oh, well actually I'm not sure what, what place it was for but uh, Justin Brunner heading into the pits at the end of lap 20 so it looks like he has a very even strategy he's going to do 20 laps followed by another 20 laps and there he goes down the pit lane and I wonder what that's going to do. Uh, certainly traffic is now going to come into play. Uh, but once again, we're picking up this battle uh, with Mittner, who is, uh, they're going through this uh, double right-hander. This is, of course, where Kerry Nolden 
had that incident with Justin Brunner. Justin Brunner, though, thankfully, uh, we didn't really touch on that. Kerry Nolden hit him pretty hard, uh, hard enough to break his suspension and retire from the race. But Justin Brunner seems to be continuing just fine. He did make that relatively early pit stop. Not many people have pit yet, uh, but it does appear that Justin Brunner's car is in a position to be competitive still, which is good for him. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, we don't want to see uh, the battles for the lead, you know, compromised. And uh, uh, unfortunately for Nolden, his race was compromised. But luckily for Brunner, he's going to be taking full advantage of the, the Season 1 champion's misfortune. As uh, now we're, we're coming back to this battle uh, that we've been seeing all afternoon. And uh, while well, these guys haven't really made any, any contact between them so far. And, uh, well, they'll be relishing in it because now it's Daniel J. Morris and Michael Mittner battling for fourth position. I mean, they wouldn't have thought that uh, just a few laps ago. But, of course, we've had uh, a, a lot of, uh, of drivers retire already this afternoon as, uh, well, Mittner is going to be trying to close up as... Uh, it looked as if Morris got a little bit on the curb in that uh, in that S section, but uh, we've also got Leon Robinson. We can't forget about him. He's had a very quiet afternoon so far, but he's sort of gone about his business, you know, just as, as, as he probably would have wanted to do. And uh, obviously, in that Willows Grand Prix car, he's going to be looking to pick up as many points as possible. Currently running in sixth, but I'm sure all of these guys, as they're coming up to uh, some lap traffic, I believe now, um, mm -hmm. on, on lap 22. Uh, they're going to be looking to take full advantage of, uh, well, especially of Nolden's misfortune as well as Phil Reed. Uh, of course, the team AOR Blue are, are going to be scoring no points this afternoon. Uh, but Mittner looks as if he's dropped just a little bit back so far uh, from the uh, the Red Devolution, uh, the Red Devolution car of Morris, and it's Leon Robinson who's trying to make inroads on Mittner at the moment. So Mittner most certainly looking in his mirrors at this stage of the race as uh, Robinson took a little look down the inside there but uh, just wasn't quite close enough uh, to make a move as they come down this uh, this straight uh, with a little kink in the middle as uh, coming towards the braking zone now and Mittner looks as if he's got that fifth position uh, currently and uh, as you said earlier on Justin this track is very very difficult to overtake and uh, it's proving to be uh, very much so uh, in the first 22 laps. Yeah, this is definitely setting up to be a race of attrition. So I think uh, Morris, Mittner, uh, Robinson, uh, even the guys farther back, you know, Keeney and all those guys, the the BA, uh, the British Canadian Racing, uh, the Baxter and Chantals, uh, all these guys, I'm pretty sure, uh, are just looking to have clean races at this point. I don't think they're pushing 110%. I think they're, you know, really making, taking extra care to, to hit their apexes, make sure they're not uh, going over the curb at turn 11, um, much like like uh, 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 who did, uh, Harley Lewis did earlier in the race. That was uh, very unfortunate for him, but a very easy mistake to make. And I think a lot of these guys are just trying to avoid those types of mistakes. And here comes that traffic that you were talking about. And again, though, it does appear that Mittner dropping off of Morris a little bit here. Um, but it does look like Morris being held up a little bit. Um, but it he, he does look like he's going to make that move at the inside of the turn five hairpin. And he does make that move just fine indeed. And I uh, fully expect this car to stay to the right-hand side and let these cars by, and he sure does. And so Mittner and Robinson can try and chase off after Morris here on lap 23. So we're past the halfway point. Uh, we're firmly in the pit stop windows, of course. Justin Brunner showing that earlier as he pit at the end of lap 20. It's going to be very interesting. We haven't seen what's been going on with him, of course. Not sure what sort of lap times he's posting in comparison to the to the top guys. So it's going to be very difficult to try and figure out uh, how this is all going to play out. Um, but certainly it could be. Oh, and that is that is actually uh, Mark Jarvis. Uh, that, that is, there is your pole sitter, one time, one time race leader, and actually current race leader after Brunner pit. Uh, so he's coming into the pits at the end of lap 23, and it's going to be interesting to find out w where he comes out in relation to Justin Brunner, who did pit three laps earlier at the end of lap 20. Um, but once again, we're focusing on this battle between Morris, Mittner, and Robinson, um, who I believe this might actually... No, no, this is not the battle for the lead just yet, but with people pitting, of course, uh, these guys are going to be moving up the field, and with lower fuel rates, actually, uh, this group of three has a ch has the potential to possibly catch the, the front runners, because, um, again, Jarvis, and uh, where where is Jarvis now in relation to Justin Brunner, I am wondering, um, is that, that is Justin Brunner just ahead of him, actually. Um, so he is just, you, know, you can see him just going through the hairpin just ahead of him. So I think he's actually just about within slipstream range of Brunner here. So we may actually see some more battling for the lead in the in the near future here. Oh yeah, most certainly. I mean, um, that, that, that pit stop there, 
Um, they certainly didn't play into Brunner's hands, unfortunately, but uh, the, the lead looks as if it has closed in that pit stop phase, and uh, currently we have got Martinson leading this race, so uh, that, that battle, which is effectively for fourth place in the race, is currently a battle for second, uh, mm -hmm. the one which we are looking at now, and Mitner just looks to be struggling at this stage of the race, and uh, nice. Robinson will most certainly be trying to take this opportunity, and is one of them going to dive into the pits? No, they're not, I don't believe, and uh, I think they're all going to carry on for another lap as uh, now we're, we're, we're coming through some more lapped traffic. So uh, is that Robinson taking a look at Mittner? No, it isn't quite. Uh, but Daniel J. Morris at this stage of the race will most certainly be very content that these two behind him are battling because it has provided him with a little bit of respite and although they have got this lap traffic in the way, Morris's tyres will most certainly be, be in better condition than Mittner and Robinson. And of course that all comes into his advantage come the end of the race of course we've only got 15 laps left in this Grand Prix and uh, as you can see Morris trying to get through this lap traffic uh, one of the tortoise cars I believe it's Evan Imre as he keeps out of the way nicely and Robinson just can't seem to get close enough to um, uh, the, the, the car in front of him which is Mitner and uh, as we've said numerous times there are not many straights on this circuit and uh, well it's going to be incredibly difficult to take a look down the um, down into turn five which is the main overtaking opportunity so maybe Robinson is going to take a look in the pit stops to maybe jump in but his front wing in fact I've only just noticed that Robinson's front wing isn't quite yeah. straight and um, no. so maybe that's affecting him on the straights I'm not sure uh, so that could be his opportunity to uh, to make an overtake but we'll have to see later on in the race and we've got a replay here, actually, uh, having a look at Alexander Trowbridge going through the first couple of corners, going very, very deep there. And it does look like he is going to lose the position to Harley Lewis, actually, uh, just breezed, breezed on by. I mean, that was almost like he was conceding the position. Uh, here's Evan Imre, who we saw uh, getting lapped earlier, as Joe was mentioning, mentioning going through the final couple of corners. As a car dives into the pits there, I wasn't able to see who that was. Um, but we are definitely into the, uh, the serious part of the race here now. Uh, this is really when desperation starts to sink in for those who have been unable to uh, to, to make their overtakes or, or do what have you. Uh, we're on board with Robert Plumley. I'm unsure if he's made his pit stop so far and uh, if this is actually a battle for position or not, um, but he is it does look like he's getting a nice slipstream here and I wonder if he's going to have a look and know he's going to hold off on uh, his attempts here. Uh, Van Rompuy holding on to that position for now again Imre running just behind them uh, I'm not sure which of these guys have made their pits already and even if these guys are all in the same lap because we did see Imre getting uh, lapped earlier so I'm not sure exactly uh, what's going on with them but they're in the same formation as they were at the start of this lap no changes of position so far and uh, I was going to ask you earlier Joe and you kind of said it already um, about whether or not maybe like Robinson should uh, just make an early pit stop because uh, because of the difficulty and we've got a side by side moment going into turn 11 here uh, you mentioned earlier that is very brave stuff there and Plumley moving ahead of Van Rompuy at probably one of the least possible overtaking locations on the circuit. I've got to imagine there's a difference in tire life between these two guys that is uh, that is causing that. Uh, on board with Justin Brunner now. No, Oh, no, at the start of lap 32, he's gotten it all wrong at turn one. That sent him into the grass, possibly may have given him some damage to his floor as well, which is going to cause significant aerodynamic damage as well. And it does look like he has lost the position to Mark Jarvis and quite a gap between them. So Jarvis is taking the lead at the start of lap 32 from Justin Brunner with that mistake at turn one, which sent him off and uh, destroyed his turn two as well. Uh, Trowbridge still running behind Plumley, keeping an eye on the rear as well as he starts lap 32 now and uh, goes through turn one, hitting that apex very nicely and avoiding running wide um, and letting it, letting it run out. It looks like he's got a sort of double apex line through those. And that's technically two turns, turns two and three, both right handers. Uh, some people like to double apex it, let the car run out wide in the middle of the corner. Uh, other people like to just keep it tight through the corner. Um, probably depends on driving style, how you've set up the car and whatnot. Um, but it does appear that Trowbridge actually has lost significant amounts of time to Plumley up ahead. You can barely see Plumley in the distance anymore. So 
Um, it looks like Plumley may have even pit, actually. I, I don't see him anywhere near, nearby. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, because we did do a little bit of skipping, so I'm not sure what happened with pit stops. But yeah, as you were mentioning, Joe, very difficult to pass here, so I imagine pit stops and that, and that sort of thing are really coming into play at this stage of the race. Oh yeah, most certainly, and uh, well, we've got Jarvis, you know, now leading the race, and the time that he did make up, it did appear that uh, he did make up time on Brunner during the pit stops. And, uh, well, that's reaped its rewards because uh, putting Brunner under that sort of pressure obviously just made him crumble. And now Jarvis has, um, well, he's, he's taken the lead of this race and with just seven or eight laps to go, uh, it looks as if he could be taking his first victory. Uh, as uh, now Trowbridge was still uh, riding with him as we go through the trees uh, at this circuit and uh, he's just looking to, to keep off that threat from Harley Lewis behind him in the Oracle racing car and uh, to be honest I think Lewis will just be trying to, to take some take some points home because it was a double DNF last time out for the Oracle racing cars they had some bad luck uh, last time out but uh, Lewis will most certainly be looking to take as many points as possible but he won't be wanting to take too many risks it has to be said as uh, there, there's a lapped car just coming into this battle now as uh, in the pits we've now got Daniel Morris um, so I believe he was running in a net fourth position at one point in the race uh, so, um, well, with just six laps left to go so he's obviously looked uh, he's obviously taken very good care of those tyres and uh, it'll be a quick blast to the end of the race. He was in second position, but I'm sure that will probably relegate him down to about fourth position. We've currently got Martinson uh, running in third, and uh, I'm sure that will probably promote him up to second place. Uh, but this battle is still going on. We've got Trowbridge ahead of Lewis as uh, they come towards the end of lap 33, starting lap 34 now. And uh, just coming through this lap traffic, um, although it does seem quite innocuous, it can it can prove oh, pivotal, especially at this stage of the race, you know. Uh, you don't want to... Uh, oh, that's, that's, just as I say that, Trowbridge runs wide, and I believe Lewis has actually got through on him. As uh, Yes, he has, and they were. They were just coming through that lap traffic, and it can prove so difficult for the, the concentration of the drivers, you know. Their, their attentions are turned to trying to lap those cars, and they almost forget that they're actually in a battle. And Lewis says, thank you very much, I'll take that position. And uh, he moves up another position, I believe, uh, into about fifth place now it'll be. And, uh, well, he'll take it, whatever it is, and some more points for the Oracle Racing Team. And uh, I'm sure that he'll, uh, well, he'll, like I say, he'll just take full advantage of that. Yeah, and uh, of course, with uh, Oliver Connor being uh, one of the first retirees in this race, Harley Lewis is the Oracle Racing Team's only sh uh, only chance of, of scoring any points today here at Barbara Motorsports Park. So as you mentioned, uh, I'm sure he is pushing very hard, but at the same time being very cautious uh, because he is now 100% of the team's potential as far as points in this race. And uh, whoa, and Andreas Merck getting into the grass there at the Penultimate oh. Corner very, very close uh, between himself and Harley Lewis and also Alexander Trowbridge very, very close. And it looks like he's going to lo lose a couple of positions there. There. So picking up on lap 37, on board with Leanne Robinson as he's going a little bit wide at the exit of turn one, start of turn two, and he's got lots and lots of pressure from Daniel J. Morris behind him. So actually, yeah, uh, that's exactly what has happened. Leanne, Morrison, uh, Leanne Robinson Morrison, I've combined them into one driver. Leanne Robinson has uh, actually jumped Morris in the pits at some point. Uh, we can assume that happened. Um, so Morris now, though, on the attack, uh, just behind Robinson. We're not really sure on Robinson's pace, though. Uh, he was stuck b behind Mittner, I do believe it was, for the majority of this race, was having a very hard time finding a way around Mittner. Uh, he did manage to jump Mittner as far as I can say. Yeah, he did, because Mittner is actually running behind Morris right now. So Leon Robinson, it, during the pit stop phase, has managed to jump both of those cars uh, and is on course for a very nice points finish here. And uh, here is our leader, starting lap 38. It is Mark Jarvis, and it does look like he is in a comfortable lead at the moment. Uh, Leon Robinson still holding off Morris, who had that very, very, very late race pit stop. Uh, Morris right now probably has the freshest tires out of everybody on the circuit. So this race is far from over for both Leon Robinson and Morris here because uh, Daniel J. Morris has some very, very fresh tires. We're, we're talking a handful of laps old, uh, and he is running very close 
close behind Leanne Robinson. Robinson, though, uh, definitely seems to have things under control at the moment anyway. Um, he doesn't really seem to be under massive pressure. Morris definitely picking up a little bit of a slipstream, but Robinson, uh, with less than three laps remaining now, does appear to have it under control. Yeah, I mean, he's still got that front wing damage, of course, but um, with the, the, that damage and, and also the, the fresh tyres of Morris, it's going to be incredibly difficult for him, but uh, obviously overtaking very, very difficult. So if he can just maybe try and hit his apexes for the final three laps, then, uh, then he should, should be fine for uh, what, what would be a fantastic result for him and Willow's GP. And uh, here he is in the, the number 69 car running still ahead of Morris as uh, they come through these sweeping corners. He takes a lot of curb there. And, uh, well, we've seen already this afternoon that taking a lot of curb uh, at that corner can see the drivers fly off the track. So uh, he's, uh, he's definitely not being conservative. And uh, he's trying to take as much time uh, out of, uh, well, much tire life out of his tires as possible because there's only two laps remaining and there is no point in having any spare tire life that, uh, that, that, that's, that's possible. And uh, maybe Morris did pit a couple of laps too early, but uh, he will nonetheless be looking to use that extra tire life to his advantage as we start lap 39, the penultimate lap of this race, as he goes wide into that turn to maybe get the cut back. As uh, now we're joining a, a battle with one of the tortoise racing cars, uh, Evan Imre. And uh, he's going to be maybe looking to make up some more positions as uh, these, these guys are further down in the classification. But they will be picking up some quite a few points this afternoon. Of course, we've seen a lot of DNFs uh, thus far as uh, we've... I'm not quite sure what this battle is for. I think it's for 13th place indeed. Uh, but they are coming up to be lapped by these guys. And this is the main battle that we're going to be sticking with till the end. And that is the one between... Robinson and Morris as uh, we see these lapped guys now and that's Martinson in fact who's up in third position so he's coming up uh, to the lap traffic now and he's gonna just want to negotiate these guys of course Martinson uh, after having that podium at most sport in uh, season one taken away from him he's gonna really want to get this one and uh, well he's definitely not gonna want this one taken away from him uh, by tangling with the, the <laughs> lap cars uh, but uh, now we're coming on to the final lap of the race you may have seen a quick shot of Mark Jarvis the, the race leader who is currently leading this race and he's just going to want to keep it together as is Martinson he's, he's just going to want to try and get past and um, just just pick up his podium uh, which is I'm sure is all he's going to want to take from this race but uh, well Justin it's been a fantastic race and I'll let you take us through the final lap yeah, it absolutely has. This uh, circuit proving that e despite the lack of overtaking locations, being very interesting to watch. Uh, a lot of fun, actually. And uh, we're having a look. As you said, this is Martinson, who has not scored a podium so far. Not legitimately, anyway. Oh, and there's Robert Plumley on the final lap of the race, getting it all wrong in th uh, through turns 7 and 8, ending up in the dirt and the grass. And it does look like he is going to rejoin just ahead of Martinson, so uh, as if Martinson didn't have enough to deal with already. Uh, but here comes our leader, Mark Jarvis, through the final corner, and he is going to swerve back and forth and enjoy his first victory of the season as, as a reserve or independent driver. Again, he's got that carbon livery, but uh, that's not th those are not points that are going to carbon racing. Unfortunately, both of their drivers retiring early in the race. But here is Martinson going through the final couple of corners in the midst of all this traffic. And, uh, of course, it doesn't really appear that he has any positions to gain or lose, so uh, maybe he's just kind of sitting back and uh, just uh, going to take his podium, as you said, uh, his first with the league, his first official podium of the league for Team AOR Red, and I'm sure he's going to be very happy about that, um, and I'm sure Kerry Nolden right now is missing him as a teammate as well. And so after the 40-lap race, it is Mark Jarvis that takes the win 4.5 seconds ahead of Justin Brunner, followed by Martinson taking that final podium position, but nearly 14 seconds behind Brunner, Martinson's first podium of the season, of course. And he is followed by Lee N. Robinson in fourth position, just 1.7 seconds behind Martinson, very close between them, and also Daniel J. Morris in the end in fifth place, followed by Michael Mittner, Alexander Trowbridge, Andreas Merck. Daniel Baxter and Stephen Chantel bringing up the or rounding out the top 10 uh, for British Canadian racing both of them in the top 10 actually and the final two cars to finish on the lead lap as well 
here at Barber Motorsports Park here today. Harley Lewis takes that 11th place position and the first of the finishers to finish one lap down. Uh, Robert Plumley comes in 12th position just behind Lewis and Alexander Van Rompuy in 13th, followed by Evan Imray, then Vittorio Saltalamacchia, and then Jamie Hall. And then Keeney uh, uh, was disqualified in 17th. Uh, Nigel Spears comes home in 18th with five uh, five laps down. Uh, still grabbing a couple of points there, though. Gino Vandenbrock comes home in 19th, grabbing a point and a half and six laps down. And there is Kerry Nolden, last season's champion, in 20th position with the DNF. Fastest lap of the race, interestingly enough, going to Kerry Nolden. Um, but unfortunately, not even able to make it to the halfway point of the race was Kerry. So, unfortunately, no points for him today. In 21st and 22nd was Patrick White and Gregor Reinick Jr. for Carbon Racing. Both of them failing to finish as well. Uh, tough day for them. Oliver Connor in 23rd DNFing as well. Uh, and also DNFing were Joshua W. Anderson, Phil Reed, and Steve Kagerer rounding out the grid of 26 cars. So, quite a few DNFs, and I'm sure everybody that managed to get a DNF today will certainly be looking forward to the Circuit of the Americas race next week and looking to score some nice points there. Justin Brunner leading the championship with 48 points. Mark Jarvis jumps up to 31 points with his win and pull position uh, today. Uh, he's one point ahead of Patrick White, followed by Jamie Fluke with 26 points, Leanne Robinson with 25, Daniel J. Morris with 25, Andreas Merck with 25, Martinson's in 8th with 22, followed by Daniel Baxter in 9th with 22 as well, and Kerry Nolden way down in 10th position after two races with just 20 points to his name so far. Not a great way to kick off his season, but of course, season one, didn't start very well for Nolden either, so this means absolutely nothing for the championship with only two rounds in. Uh, he's actually tied with Robert Plumley, who also has 20 points, currently in 11th place. Phil Reed for AOR Blue, currently in 12th with 17 points. Gino Vandenbrock is now in 13th with 16 and a half points for ACR. Alexander Trowbridge in 14th with 16 points. Michael Mintner in 15th with 15 points. Marcus Jensen in 16th with 14, tied with Evan Emre, who's in 17th. Peter Newman in 18th place with 13 points. Stephen Chantel and Harley Lewis rounding out the top 20 with 11 and 10 points, respectively, for the pair of them. And certainly, uh, they will be looking to improve their uh, standings next week at Coda as well. Chantal uh, picking up some nice points here today at Barber Motorsports Park. In 21st position is Vittorio Saltalamacchia with 10 points. He's just one point ahead of Christoph Leister, who is currently sitting on nine, who is also just one point ahead of Alexander Van Rompuy in 23rd with eight, eight points. Frederick Johansson is in 24th with five points, followed by Jamie Hall, who also has five points. Steve Kagerer in 26th with three points. Nigel Spears in 27th with two. And Timu Valkyarvi, the lowest of the points holders at the moment as it stands, uh, with just one point to his name. While, ne while, to his name excuse me, while Neil Lukens and Gregor Reinek Jr. for Carbon Racing and, uh, well, uh, Neil Lukens for Team AOR Red in 29th and 30th place is the highest of the of the finishers who have yet to score points so far. Phil Blythe is in 31st with zero points as well. Oliver Connor, 32nd with zero points. Joshua W. Anderson, Keeney, and Van Dorn as well, bringing up the rear, all yet to score points so far this season. I'm sure they're going to be looking to, ch once again, as I mentioned before, I'm sure they're going to be looking to change those fortunes at the next race coming up very soon at Circuit of the Americas. It's, the, it's going to be the West configuration, and I'm sure those guys are going to be practicing hard to try and get some points on the board there. In the team's championship, Red Devolution GP is currently in first position with Jamie Fluke and Daniel J. Morris adding up to 51 points. It's just three points between them and Vortex Sim Racing, uh, which is just Justin Brunner. Uh, and he is currently sitting in second in the team's championship with 48 points. Team AOR Blue off to a rough start with 37 points. They had a rough time in Interlagos and an even rougher time here at Barber Motorsports Park. They're at Barber Motorsports Park. They're only four points ahead of British Canadian Racing with 33, Carbon Racing with 30, Caducci Racing with 30, Red Devolution Racing with 27 points. And uh, ACR Kraken GP way down in 11th with 24 points. AOR Red uh, struggling as well with Martinson and Lukens this season with 22 points. Way down in 12th position. 
in the team team's championship. ACR as well, uh, who were way up there last season, really struggling this season. Only 17 and a half points between Gino Vandenbroek and Timu Valkyarvi. And as we saw in the in the uh, drivers' championship. Uh, just a minute ago, of course, only one of those 17 and a half points coming from Timu Valkyarvi. Um, so he's really going to need to start putting some points on the board if ACR are going to want to move up in the standings. Uh, as I mentioned before, coming up next week is at Circuit of the Americas or CODA in Austin, Texas. Uh, this is the West configuration, so uh, you'll get the first half of the S's, and then you cut across the circuit, and you miss the second half of the S's, you miss the hairpin, and you miss that very, very, very long straight, uh, which no doubt would have just caused people to pass each other back and forth. So this should be a very good configuration for these Star Mazdas. Looking forward to it. Should be a very exciting race uh, for round three of season two of the AOR Pro Mazda Championship. So for myself and for Joe and also, of course, for Crack and Fizzy. I thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time at Circuit of the Americas for the AOR Pro Mazda Championship.